reference. That's <laughs> probably one too weird. But hey, thank you for letting me be in Los Angeles. I'm so happy to be here. It took me a long time to get here, but I came for the reason most of you did. Um, my ex-husband tried to murder me four times. <laughs> but, you know, it was not without a little bit of sentiment because he knew that I was too good for rap poison, right? <laughs> So he got creative in the ways he tried to murder me. Uh, there was a chainsaw. There was murder by Segway. Um, he sent me out into a tornado one time on Mother's Day, no joke. But it was, I finally connected the dots when the shotgun made its appearance because that was just too aggressive and confrontational. And that was what my California therapist calls a red flag. <laughs> right? Yeah? So uh, I just busted on out of the south like my tail was on fire and the rest of me was catching. And I'm so glad to be here. I feel like I'm in the land of normal. But my family... <laughs> My family is still in the South, and I so worry about them because they've got so much going on. Like uh, my brother, I'm close to my brother. He lives with a monkey. I'm not even joking. He lives with, a, well, it's a kinkachu. And the kinkachu's name is Kevin. And I said to my brother, this is an exotic animal. It's gonna hurt you one day. But so far, the monkey, I guess he has self-hate issues. He's mostly just aggressive with himself. Um, he got into some trail mix one time and got this allergic reaction where he got a near-fatal heart on. I'm not even kidding. And so he just starts touching himself more and more in an unfriendly manner. And so basically he tried to bite his dick off. There's no nice way to say that. And so my brother had to drive him all the way to the state capital of Raleigh to find a veterinarian who knew what a kinkachu was. Because remember, it's part of the monkey family and we did not learn evolution in school. In the deep south. But then, you know, I'm kind of, this was not my bit, but I'm looking around at you men and I'm like, wouldn't it be awesome if it's not that kinkachus are allergic to strawberries, which was the problem with my brother's monkey, what if it's all males named Kevin and they get like a permanent stiffy from strawberries? You know what I'm saying? That women, right? The bar scene? Because this guy is super cute. And I can see myself like, hey, what's your name? Kevin. Okay, I got some strawberry by your mind. So what's up? <laughs> but you don't want to get stuck paying any man's veterinarian bill, am I right? Because they are so much more expensive than them. But strawberries, good food, you know, not going to hurt most of us. Um, from the south, I want to dispel a myth, speaking of food. Most of you guys think that we have awesome food all the time, and this is not true. It's not fried chicken and biscuits every day unless you're a tourist, because we're trying to get your money. Those of us born and bred in the Deep South eat nasty, nasty mess called congealed salads. And this is where your grandma takes everything in the refrigerator. You're nodding, you know, I feel the pain connection here. She takes everything that's left over in the fridge, mixes that with mayonnaise, puts it in a jello mold, and then serves it up next to your ham loaf. <laughs> I'm not even, I can't, I'm gonna cry. But uh, even worse than that is tomato aspic. Has anybody in this room ever had tomato aspic? Oh, no, whoever cheered, no, no. This is a congealed salad from the bowels of hell itself. It is tomato juice flavored jello with chicken broth and onions. And it's chilled in a jello mold until it's a congealed mass of blood colored nastiness. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, when I left the South, I wrote my parents a letter and I said, I need not only a support group, but a restitution fund. Because Jesus be a fence around my GI tract. I, you know, I'm still suffering the consequences. But California, we have good food here, right? 
We have the quinoa and the couscous, and I even like the spam sushi. I do. But the problem is you've got to become a Californian, and that means taking on the DMV. And they are, oh, they are harsh. They're harsh. They told me when I show up that they have to have documentation of the original odometer reading on my car, which I bought new 20 years ago. I'm like, dude, we don't even have that thing in North Carolina. I am required to have a piece of paper, ma'am, that has the original odometer reading for your car. So I pull a Popeye's napkin out of my pocketbook <laughs> and a Sharpie, and I write down, odometer reading, five test miles, September 1st, 2008. And I said, now let me tell you what I require. I went all southern. I was more tore up than a monkey with a heart on. I said, I require to live in the Los Angeles and be happy and attend spin class. Are we clear on what I require? <laughs> so he asked for my debit card. I gave him a cash tip, and I am home free, monkey fighters. I am a Californian. Woo! Thank you. For